Welcome, my name is Megan. My YouTube channel is Enigma Yoga. And today I'm offering an intermediate level vinyasa flow class that presumes some knowledge of basic yoga postures and vinyasas. So before we get started, if you'd like to review how to do a sun salutation A or a sun salutation B, maybe take this opportunity to pause this video and check out some of my shorter tutorials here at Enigma Yoga. Uh, if not, uh, we can begin the flow practice here shortly. It's home practice, so you may want to consider whether you want to bring some props into the practice. And if you don't have these at home, they are great substitutes. I have with me my trusty yoga blocks. If you don't have yoga blocks, you can use a nice large book or maybe a large photo album. I have my yoga strap. If you don't have that for some of the postures we're going to do today, you can grab just a dish towel or a short hand towel. And I also have with me my trusty yoga blanket. Nice to cover up, snuggle up on a cold winter day, which it is here in the Northern Virginia area where I'm coming to you from. So if you'd like to grab those things, uh, now again, that would be a nice opportunity to do that. Um, and if not, uh, we'll begin with what I like to think of as a sort of a winter detox practice to kind of get some of those creaks and cracks and mm -hmm. cold stiffness out of our system. Um, it'll be a practice I hope that you can come back to in the future over time, even when it's not a cold winter day, I will offer modifications along the way so you can customize this practice according to the needs of your body on any given day or any given season. So with that said, start in a child's pose today. So we'll come back to sort of the back area of our mat, sink back towards our heels, hips down towards the heels, and you can have those knees together or you can open them nice and wide if you'd like that variant and reach those arms long and forward out in front of you palms down to the mat fingers pressing gently into the mat and lower your forehead down to the mat and maybe if you are a seasonal allergy sufferer you can take a nice opportunity here just roll that forehead side to side on the mat. It can give a little massage, maybe loosen up some congestion you're feeling in the forehead in the winter time. And here in child's pose, just start to notice your breathing. Bring the inhales in through the nose and exhale out through the nose. And just notice the sensation of breath as a focal point that you can return to throughout this practice. Maybe as other sensations or thoughts try to steal your attention away, just reminding yourself to come back and focus on that breathing. Keeping it steady and even in and out through the nose. Maybe trying to match the length of the exhale with the length of the inhale. And just one more round of easy inhale and exhale breath here in child's pose. And let's come up to tabletop pose on our hands and knees with the wrists directly under elbows, directly under shoulders, and knees directly under the hips. And we'll continue that breath with some rounds of cat-cow. So inhale, dropping belly down to the mat and lifting the forehead, crown of the head to the sky. And then as we exhale, rounding the spine and arching it up towards the ceiling, dropping the head towards the mat. And we'll continue like that for a few rounds of breath, waking up the spine, maybe getting some stiffness out if you've been snow shoveling, or maybe just sitting in the couch watching movies. 
fighting against the cold. Just bringing some movement into the spine, warming up. Inhaling down into cow pose and arching the back into cat right on cue. My cat is sneezing in the corner. If you can hear that, maybe that's what it is. This is what home practice is all about. So wherever you are, one more inhale into cow. And we'll do another exhale cat. And then come back to a neutral tabletop. From here, we'll take a nice shoulder stretch, thread the needle. So inhale, the right arm rises up to the ceiling. And on the exhale, bring it through the space that you create between your body and your left arm elbow as you bend down towards the earth. And the shoulder, right shoulder goes towards the earth, right cheek to the earth. And you feel a nice, Stretch through the lower back, through the shoulder, maybe even a little bit of your neck there. Just be brief, allowing some opening in the shoulder, kind of twisting in the spine. Maybe thinking about trying to keep those hips nice and neutrally pointed forward over the knees towards the front of the mat. On the inhale, untwist back to center and reaching left arm up to the sky. We take a twist over to the left side, left shoulder towards earth, left palm on the ground, left ear and cheek on the ground, pressing into that right hand to support the twist here. Breathing into the backs of the lungs, and we're going to twist sometimes. Maybe you feel a little bit of compression around the lungs. Making sure to bring that breath in, fill up the tops and backs of the lungs. Nice and smooth, inhaling and exhaling through the nose, even in some of these contorted positions. And inhale, come back up to center. We'll take one more set of poses here on the knees just to bring some movement in early on in the practice. So the first, last one we'll do here is tiger. This will be a good shoulder opener and a good back bend warm up. So reaching the right arm back and lifting the left leg up. We want the knee at a right angle, foot, sole of the foot up towards the ceiling. Catch that ankle in the right hand and kick through the quadricep and the glute muscles so that sole of the foot, heel, toe rises up towards the ceiling. And this will be a fairly intense stretch through the shoulder. And you'll feel some fire build maybe in that left leg as we kick. Left arm is here as a great support to keep the balance. It can be a little wobbly sometimes on the hand or the knee like this. And maybe you notice a stretch in your lower back as it starts to bend. One more inhale and then let that relax. Hands and knee down to the floor. And we'll switch it out this time. The right leg rises into that 45 degree angle. Left hand reaches back, catches right foot, and then we kick up towards the ceiling, pushing through the heel, trying to keep that knee and hip closed down to the floor rather than opening up to the side like a dog doing, you know, a fire hydrant. And maybe lift the gaze up and out forward. Feeling, stretching, fire building. This is a strong beginning to the practice. And then let that go. And we'll work into some sun salutations next. 
I'm going to show you a modification before we start. If you have any sensitivity in your shoulders, you may wish to take this, or even if you just are not feeling a strong practice today. So from tabletop pose, drop the chest down towards the ground, maybe the chin extended out on the earth, anahata, stimulating your heart chakra here and then pressing forward, pressing the knees down, pressing into the hands for a baby cobra looking up. And then from here, you can come back into tabletop. And this can be a good modification for chaturanga through the vinyasa. So let's pull up into downward dog, our first downward dog of the practice. You may wish here to take some movement just to wake up the backs of the legs and the shoulders and the back. Or if you like to bend one knee and then straighten the other, that can be a nice way to settle into the first downward dog. And then as you're ready, coming back to stillness in the pose, pressing into the palms, the fingers, Broadening those shoulders low and across your back. Pushing the hips back and up towards the ceiling. And on the next inhale, we'll step forward with the right foot. Left foot meets at the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift with a nice flat spine. Exhale, fold forward down to the earth. Inhale, stand all the way up and sweep the arms up overhead. Gathering the hands, the heart center. Inhale, reach up overhead again, and then fold all the way back down to the ground. Halfway lift on your next inhale, and then exhale, fold back down, plant the palms, step the feet back into plank pose. You can lower in plank or set the knees down, or take the chest down modification for our first vinyasa. Inhale into your back bend. And exhale, pull it back into tabletop or into downward facing dog. And you notice I'm modifying. I'm feeling some sensitivity today, but customize these vinyasas as you like. Inhale, step forward with the right foot. Left foot meets. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, fold down. Inhale, root down to rise up to the sky to gather those hands into the prayer. Inhale, reach up overhead and swan back, back down to the earth. Halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold forward, plant the palms, step down. Take your vinyasa, modify your vinyasa, or skip your vinyasa as you like. And we meet back in tabletop or in our downward facing dog. We'll take one more series of sun A. Step forward on the inhale, left foot meets. Inhale, fold, lift, halfway lift and exhale, fold it back down. Inhale, stand tall and gather those hands to heart center. Inhale, reach up overhead and then fold down to the earth. Halfway lift, exhale, fold, plant the palms and take the vinyasa as it serves you today. Again, we meet at the back of our mat. Maybe a breath or two here. And we'll take one sun salutation be just to continue building that heat in the body. So on inhale, pull the hips back, bend the knees, on the exhale, either step or flip forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, rise up into chair pose. We'll hold this for a few beats since it'll be our only chair pose today. The feet nice together on the mat, knees together, hips dropping low and heavy. Arms reaching up and forward, maybe gaze lifted. Building the heat in the quadriceps, warming up those legs. And exhale, stand all the way up tall, hands to heart center. Inhale, the arms up overhead. 
fold all the way down to the earth. Inhale, lift, exhale, fold. Plant the palms, step it back, and we take our vinyasa here. Pulling the hips back, meeting in downward dog. Right foot steps forward, rising up into our first warrior one for just a moment. And then exhale, arms down, hands bring the right foot. Stepping back into plank, taking chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward, warrior one. Inhale the arms up. Just enough time to find the pose. And exhale the arms down, training the left foot this time, stepping back, lowering, taking our vinyasa, however it serves us today. And meeting again in tabletop or downward facing dog. Plum dog. Right foot steps forward and we rise up into our warrior one. We'll hold here for a few breaths just to channel some of that warrior energy. So keeping awareness of alignment in that right leg that is bent. The foot pointing forward to the front of the mat, the knee stacking directly over the ankle. Making sure as you bend into that knee that you can still see the toes and the instep of the foot. From here, we'll take humble warrior, reaching the arms behind us and clasping the hands. Now, if, you, if the clasp isn't available to you right now, you can go for the elbows or you can grab that strap or a dish towel and hold it so you've got some space there. Once we've got our hands in position, we'll Bow down to the earth, bringing the right shoulder towards the inside of the right knee, dropping the gaze, maybe dropping the crown of the head down towards the ground, lifting the shoulders up behind us, stretching and rinsing through the shoulders. This pose is very humbling, hence the name, and it builds quickly. So continuing to maintain that even breath. Inhale, back up to standing, unclasp the hands. Coming back into warrior one and opening out into our warrior two. Gazing out over the right palm that's facing down towards the earth. Left arm reaching out, radiating out from the heart center. Hips open to the left side of our space. Flip that right palm up to face the ceiling and let's reverse the warrior. It's like you're painting a paintbrush across your ceiling as you reach towards the back of your space. Left hand slides down the left leg. Inhale back up into warrior two. Reaching the right arm forward towards side angle. Hand to the inside of the right foot. If you like, you can take that block or book, place it there to bring the ground closer to you. You can also modify here by bringing the right elbow to the right thigh. Whatever modification serves your practice today, the heat is building. Just one more inhale here. And then inhale it back up to warrior two. We'll take one more revolved warrior. Luxurious stretch in that right side body. And then we'll cartwheel those arms down, framing the right foot, stepping that right foot back, lowering down through the vinyasa or skipping the vinyasa if that was quite enough for you. Pulling back either tabletop or downward facing dog. And a breath here, and we'll continue with the left side. Left foot steps forward, rising up into our warrior one hold. Right foot in the back should be at about a 45 degree angle towards the front of your mat. Hips pointing forward to the front of your space. 
arms lifted, proud towards the ceiling, and drawing those shoulder blades low and apart from each other across the back to create space around the neck. Now we'll reach behind this again for that humble warrior clasp or strap. Maybe if you're clasping the hands, put the other thumb on top to switch the grip and bow down into that feeling of humility that is also paired with the strength of a warrior. And inhaling as the left shoulder reaches towards inside of left knee, head down towards earth and the shoulders stretching behind you. And inhale back up to full open warrior one. Then open out into two, gazing out over the left hand this time. If at any time the bend in the leg becomes too much, you can always just come out of the pose a little bit. Breathing as you reach the arms forward and back, feel the support of those strong legs beneath you. And then flipping the left palm to face the ceiling, reversing. This time the stretch in the left side body as you reach towards the back of your space. Inhale back up to warrior two and continue reaching forward to take that side angle on the left side. Again, whatever arm placement of the left arm works for you, maybe a block, maybe not. Maybe reaching that right arm out over your head towards the space where the wall and the ceiling meet, feeling like you can shoot sparks out of your fingertips. There's so much energy here. Inhaling back up to warrior two. And let's take one more reverse towards the back of the, of the mat. Inhaling up, pinwheeling arms down, framing left foot, step it back and lower through the chaturanga into up dog or cobra. Exhale back into that tabletop or that downward facing dog. From here, maybe an inhale through the nose and then exhale it out through the mouth, lion breath. And we'll take one more flow before we do some standing postures and then Calm things down. Stepping right foot forward, rising up into crescent pose, up on the toes of that left foot behind us. And then knee on the back leg. If you like, you can take the knee here. So you don't have to stay up in the lunge. If you're up in the crescent lunge, maybe think about working that knee towards straight if it's available to you. We'll take a twist here. We have some options in the twist. You can open it out to the side. If you like to take a prayer twist, you can bring the hands into prayer position and then lean into that left elbow against the outside of the right knee. And use that pressure of the elbow into the knee to maybe deepen the twist wherever you are. On every inhale, think about lengthening your spine long. And on the exhale, maybe just holding a twist or maybe encouraging it a millimeter further, just maybe. And inhaling, coming back up to the center. And spin that back foot flat, straighten the front leg. Open the arms out to face the left side of your space. And from here, we'll reach the hand forward and we'll take triangle pose. And so again, if you've got that block or book and you want to bring the floor closer to you, that's a good use of a prop here. Or you can have the hand on the ground on the inside of the right foot. And we'll reach that left hand up towards the sky and twist the torso open to the left side of the space. Stretching the crown of the head long towards the front of your mat and breathing. Contracting the quadricep muscles for stability in this pose. 
Maybe also avoiding dumping into the backs of the knees by placing a little micro bend there if you have a tendency to hyperextend. And inhaling back up to center. From here, we'll open our feet out to point in opposite directions. We'll take goal post or cactus arms. I'm gonna do a little spin move here. And we'll take goddess pose, sinking down into a squat, opening those hips in both directions at one time, which can feel vulnerable, but so strong as we build more heat in those legs. If you are finding it a little bit much to so just hold the pose, then feel free to take some inhale and exhale cycles here. Just another inhale and an exhale. And stand it all the way up, turn the feet to pigeon toe towards the front. And you can bring the hands to the hips, fold it all the way down with a nice flat back for prasarita, wide-legged forward fold. Options with the arms here, you can have a rag doll. You can have the hands resting down on the earth. Or you can take that bind as we did in Humble Warrior. We continue opening and stretching through that shoulder joint. Take a few rounds of breath here to experience the stretch. Rolling the weight forward into the toes. Allowing gravity to decompress the lower back, the spine. And then bring the hands back to the hips. Inhaling up slowly with a nice flat back. Stepping the feet back to the front of the mat. Arms out overhead and folding all the way down to the earth. Halfway lift on the inhale. Exhale, fold it forward, plant the palms. Step the feet back and we let it all Go with a vinyasa or straight back to tabletop or downward facing dog. And we know now where we are headed. And we finish up left side, stepping forward, rising up into crescent pose on the left knee. The right is again behind us and always the option to take crescent on the knee and that can continue into the twist however you like. So we open into the twist. If you are interested in the prayer twist, particularly if you took it on the other side, then the right elbow comes to the outside of the left knee and you breathe into the backs of the lungs Pull the navel into the spine. Stretch out through the crown of the head. And we inhale, bring it back up to center. Spin that back foot flat, straighten the front leg. Turn towards the right side of the space. Reach out with the left arm this time. Hand the inside of the left foot to a block maybe. Reaching up through the right hand, turning chest, opening out towards right side of the space. Long through the spine and the crown of the head, breathing here. Maybe thinking about drawing the heels toward each other on the mat. You won't actually move, but you might feel a different sensation in the inner thighs in the hamstrings. And breathing here, keeping the left hip pulled in and back towards the midline instead of swinging out. And inhale it back up to center. We'll turn those feet out again 
Take this cactus arm and sink down into this goddess squat, opening up hips that can get so tight. Feeling again our feet grounding into the earth, fire building strong legs supporting our bodies. Maybe lifting the chin a little, gazing to a high point in the distance. Keeping the breath even. And then stand it all the way up, turn the feet parallel to each other, hands to hips, fold forward into Brasavita. And any arm variation you like. I invite you again, if you take the bind, to change the grip on the hands, get an even stretch through the shoulders. And allow gravity again to let that spine stretch out and breathe. Let those shoulders draw the hands towards the mat if you're in the bind. Wherever you are, enjoying that stretch through the backs of the legs and the calming energy that results from having the head within the heart. Bring the hands back to the hips, flat back, standing all the way up. Please step forward to meet at the front of the mat. We reach those arms up overhead and we swan dive down all the way to the earth. Halfway lift, forward fold and plant the hands. Step back into plank or chaturanga on the knees or skip chaturanga. Again, this is your practice. And we meet in down dog or tabletop. Couple of breaths here to just let everything settle. Let all that hard work recede into the distance. And then we step right foot forward and lift the knee to the front of the mat. And from here, we'll just roll it on up one vertebrae at a time. Head is the last to rise, come all the way to standing. And here we'll take bow pose, standing bow. It's also referred to as dancer's pose. If you'd like to have some assistance of the balance, you can stand next to a mantle or a couch or a chair piece of furniture. Grab the right ankle with the right hand and you'll turn the elbow out so that your blood giving side of your arm is facing out. So you're catching that ankle from the inside. Now, if you're not going to hold on to anything today, you can reach the left arm up to the sky. And maybe, depending on what your balance is like today, maybe this is as far as you want to explore this pose. You'll feel maybe notice an opening in the shoulder. If you want to take it further, you can start kicking that foot into the hand as we did when we were in tabletop in tiger's pose on the ground. And as you kick, you'll keep the hip pointed down towards the earth instead of opening out to the side. So you'll start to notice a bend in the lower back. And then maybe if you wanna go even further, you can start to Lower the chest so it becomes towards parallel towards the floor. And you'll reach forward with the left arm. It helps with the balance if you have a nice steady gazing point, maybe somewhere on the floor in front of you. Some spot that's not moving that you can focus on. So it's called your drishti, where you're focusing your energy. And if you fall out, you can always get back into the pose and keep practicing. This is why we call it yoga practice, not yoga perfect. The body will open up over time. And then inhale, 
Come back to standing, let go of the foot, drop the arms, and we can stand in Tadasana Mountain Pose for a few rounds of breath, just to let that recover and settle before we move on to the left side. So standing strong into that right foot, maybe contracting that right quadricep for strength and balance, bringing the left hand out to the left side, lifting left foot off the floor and catching left ankle. Again, maybe this is as far as you go and you work into opening the shoulder. If you desire to continue, the right arm lifts. And then from here, kicking in to that left foot and to that left hand, squaring the hip down towards the floor. Keeping the weight into all four corners of that foot. And as the foot comes higher up and you feel a bend in your back, maybe you start to drop the chest down towards parallel to the floor. And you find your steady gazing point and if you come out of the posture, you can come back in as many times as you need to. Challenging the balance, it can feel very frustrating sometimes, but don't ascribe any judgment to where you are in your practice today or where you think you should be. The body knows what it needs. Every day is different. And you'll notice an opening over time if you're regular with your practice. And inhale it back up. Set the foot down, bring the arms. Palms facing forward, standing tall in the mountain pose. We have reached the top of the mountain. Few steady breaths here. And our final standing posture, we'll take tree pose. Standing into the left foot, nice and strong. Bringing the sole of the right foot somewhere along the inside of the left leg. It can be against ankle, calf, inner thigh, just don't press it into the knee. And hands, you have lots of options. They can come to heart center. You can reach them up to the sky if you want. Feeling like a tree out in the winter woods. Maybe we're swaying a little bit with the breeze, but that is what the trees do. They bend and they flex so that they will not break. And you can bring the arms back down. Let that right leg settle back down to the earth. Shift the weight into the right foot, root it down. And the left sole comes to the inside of the right leg again, anywhere but against the knee. And the hands can be down, palms facing forward, any arm variation you like. For me, this has always been one of the most challenging poses in my practice because it seems that it should be simple, but as you are maybe experiencing, it is not easy to stand in stillness and balance. But those, I think, are the poses we should focus on the most, the ones that maybe frustrate us the most. And letting go the tree, letting the left foot come down to the mat, stepping the feet, wide apart, maybe as wide as the mat, bringing the hands to heart center, squatting all the way down into Malasana Yogi squat. 
Maybe you like to grab a block and you can set your seat down on the block. But pressing the elbows into the knees, allowing openness in the hips. If you have a bakasana, a crow pose in your practice, I don't know if I do today or not, but we'll see. Placing the hands to the earth in front of you, gathering the knees as high up onto the triceps as possible. And then maybe one toe lifts. Maybe the second toe lifts. And you balance. And then you let that go. And we all come back to our seats. We'll touch the core a little bit here with Navasana bow pose. And we'll have modifications here. So you roll, balancing onto your tailbone coccyx area. And this is a great way to hold Navasana with the hands to the backs of the thighs and the legs bent. If you are up for a challenge, you can straighten those legs. You can release the backs of the legs. We'll do some work here in the Vasana. And if at any time you want to place the feet down onto the ground and give yourself a rest or bend the knees, you do that. Let's lower into Ardhana Vasana half boat. So shoulders, head lifted, toes hovering about two feet off the ground. Drawing the navel into the spine. And let's lift it all the way back up into Navasana. And we hold and we breathe here for a few rounds of breath, maybe starting to tremble, maybe thinking about taking a modification. And lower it back down into Ardha Navasana. Holding here again, lifting shoulders, lifting legs, but if you want to lower it down to the ground, you can do that. Pulling it up one more time into Ardha Navasana. Sorry, into full Navasana. <laughs> my uh, brain cells are trembling as much as my body right now. Lowering down one more time into Ardha Navasana. Half boat hovering, feeling that fire and lowering all the way down. Few moments here to just breathe and relax, mini savasana before we get to the real thing. And let's continue with wind removing pose, a lovely pose that's very helpful in the winter time. And maybe digestion needs a little support. Legs long and heavy out in front of you. Bend the right knee and interlace the hands right below the right knee and draw the knee up towards the armpit, bringing it out towards the side body. Keeping that left shoulder flat on the earth. So if you have to ease up on pulling the knee to make sure that shoulder stays flat on the earth, you do that. Neck and the back of the head long, flat across the floor and pulling to feel maybe a stretch, a tightness in the hip, and this is going to massage your internal digestive system. Letting the right knee go and relax long on the mat in front of you, lifting this time the left leg, bending the knee, interlacing the hands below the knee and pulling that knee back towards your armpit. Again, keeping that right shoulder flat on the earth. If that means backing off on the pulling, then that is what you do. And the head and the neck stay long and heavy on the earth. Allowing the massage of the internal digestive system to occur on the left side. And we let that release. And this time, both legs lift up. And you hug into a tight little ball, reaching for the elbows, but maybe just the forearms, whatever you can grab. And the head and the neck again, lie flat to the ground as you pull the knee into the chest and hug yourself into this tight little ball. 
completing the cycle of stimulating that internal digestive system. Sometimes if you're in a group class, if you are in fact releasing the wind, it can be uncomfortable, but you're in the comfort of your own home, so you do you. And then letting everything relax onto the mat. Now from here, we'll wind it down with our hip opener. We'll take or climb figure four here on the back. So bend the knees, placing the feet about to the distance where you could touch the backs of the heels with your fingertips and lifting up that right leg bending it about 90 degrees and crossing the right ankle over the left knee, keeping the toes flexed to avoid injury to the knee and reaching forward, lifting the left leg to draw that up towards you. You can interlace the fingers either at the shin or behind the thigh, wherever you're reaching today and just draw it all in towards your chest. And we'll hold here for a few rounds of breath to allow the stretch to deepen. Allowing the release to occur over time, getting in through those layers and peeling those layers away. This time lift up the left leg, bend at the knee, and cross the left ankle across the right knee. And lifting up the right leg, maybe even grab where you can grab on the right shin, thigh, wherever. And pulling all of that towards the chest, breathing into the stretch on the left side, maybe you experience it differently than on the right side, not uncommon to have differences from one side of the body to the other. It's interesting to notice, but no need to ascribe any value judgment to that. And just maybe noticing if the hips feel a little bit different than when we first came to the mat at the beginning of the practice. Notice if maybe there's a little more softness where before there might have been tightness. Maybe thinking about where we can bring that kind of transition to other areas of our life. Maybe releasing some of the things we've held on to for longer than we need to. And letting that go, we'll take our supine twist here on our backs. Both legs come up at a 90 degree angle, and if you'd like to take an eagle wrap, I would suggest crossing right leg over left first, and arms reaching out from the shoulders, dropping legs over towards the earth on the left side, gazing out over the right shoulder. One final twisting pose just to allow the last stretch twist rinse of the spine from the crown of the head down to the base of the spine. Maybe again, thinking back to the beginning of the practice and if you've 
released anything that was preventing you from moving freely or breathing freely or not in any other way constraining you today. Allowing the floor to support you and hold you up in this twist. Slowly, carefully inhaling it back up to center. If you had an eagle wrap, maybe taking left knee or the right this time. Reaching left arm out from the shoulder and dropping the legs over to the right, gazing out over the left shoulder. And settling in, allowing the skin to melt over the muscles and the muscles to melt over the bone. Maybe noticing a sense of savasana creeping up. Inhaling the knees back up to center, unwrapping the legs. And from here, letting those legs stretch out long and lean on the mat in front of you. If you have a blanket or an eye pillow, something you like to use to make yourself comfortable in your savasana, you can take that. And then come to stillness. Resting the legs, toes may be falling apart, the arms lying on the mat next to you, palms facing out to the sky to receive all of the benefits of the practice today. Eyes can close or come to a soft gaze. Nothing left to do here but breathe. Coming back where we began to the sensation of the inhale, filling up the lungs with clean, fresh air and the exhale, emptying out that which no longer serves. Scanning through the body from toes to the crown of the head to see if there's any place you might still be holding, gripping, having some tension and just inhaling into that and then on the exhale, releasing it, letting it go. Maybe let that tongue come free from the roof of the mouth and let the jaw relax. Let the lips relax. Let the eyelids and the eyebrows relax. Maybe that little place in between your eyebrows. Let that go. Let the forehead relax and just let everything settle into the mat. Stay here in final rest as long as you like. If you'd like to stay, maybe pause the video here. If you're ready to come back, I'll invite you to wiggle fingers and toes and bring back a little bit of movement into the physical body. Roll over to one side in the fetal position for a few moments. And press into the hands. Come up into a comfortable, easy seat. Maybe keeping that soft gaze or eyes closed for just a few more moments. Feeling that sense of peace and calm that you cultivated. Taking that out into the world. 
even if it's just into a virtual world and sharing it with others who may need to experience that peace and calm for themselves. Maybe finding a sense of gratitude for taking the time to engage in this practice today for your body and for your mind. Thank you for coming to practice with me today, sharing your time with me. And I hope to see you again here on the mat. The light in me acknowledges and honors the light in you. Namaste.